Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my continued playthrough, episode 4 of Darkest Night, 2nd edition, where uh, we are playing the Ranger, the Druid, the Acolyte, and the Rogue, trying to overthrow the Necromancer who's taken over the world, and we are fighting to save it with from one last bastion of hope, the Monastery, uh, where we are hoping to uh, overcome uh, the Necromancer. Now, we have a problem is that we're like five turns or not more than five turns but five ticks up the the uh, darkness track without a single clue or mystery coming out on the board so that's a little challenging but we're going to get over that we're going to get through that for sure and uh, continue on now um i do want to say if you hear a little humming or something in the background i do have a couple haste, uh, space heaters running it's rather cold here in texas today and especially with my shoulder acting the way it is, uh, having some problems with that. Um, it, uh, the heat is helpful. If it gets cold, it starts to ache pretty badly. Anyway, uh, we're going to get right on it and get into the game, so um, uh, let's get started. Now, at the end of the last turn, we ended up with the scenarios you see on the board here. It's pretty self-explanatory. we got some blights building up, so we're going to have to... We are taking care of them, but one of the things I always thought was interesting about this game is that... Uh, you don't get any rewards for destroying blights. The reward is destroying the blight, and uh, that makes it interesting because you're not getting any perks or benefits from taking these things down other than to stave off the uh, the end, the inevitable end that we're trying to avoid. But with that said, I think we're going to start uh, down in the forest with our our uh, rogue. He did complete a quest, but uh, which was to kill some wraiths that were roaming the area, but we failed to rescue some trapped children, and as a result, the darkness went up just a little bit, which is unfortunate. But we did have some great event cards that reduced the darkness in our our world, so uh, that was helpful, but now we're back at it again. So we're going to start with the rogue. He's by himself. He's down in the forest. And, of course, the first thing we have to do is draw his event card. It says, Test of Faith compared to Secrecy. Well, this is going to be wonderful. His Secrecy is a 6. 5 plus, lose 1 Secrecy to gain a spark. Uh, three to four, lose one grace, gain a spark. Or zero to two, exhaust all but one power, gain a spark. Well, we're just going to lose a secrecy to gain a spark. It's a bad situation, but you know what you must do. Yes, we must gain, lose a secrecy to gain a spark. So here's the, the secrecy. I'm going to put it on his board, and we're going to drop, or sorry, the spark, rather. It's a little spark token, which means we can get to add a die to a check if we want to. And his uh, secrecy is now down to a five, which isn't so bad. For him, it's very easy for him to get additional secrecy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to search. His action is going to be to search the forest. Luckily, we got a spark, so we're going to use that spark immediately to get two dice on the search wall. We need a four in the forest, so searching there's a little tougher. We got a five and a three, so I'm glad I took two dice because we may have missed. So we do succeed in that search. Let's see what we get from our map card down in the forest. We get this. Uh, Dust. What is this? This is going to be uh, Cursed Ashes. Discard during your turn to ignore the effects of Blights for the rest of the turn. That is actually a really interesting artifact. Or token. It's an item. It's not an artifact. Artifacts are much more powerful. Here's that token. We're going to put it on the Rogue. Unfortunately, that is not what we're looking for. <laughs> so that, that kind of sucks. We're going to go there, and the Rogue is done. Next, we'll go to the Ranger. The Ranger's in the Monastery, so we don't have to draw an event card. And the Ranger is going to do a check that you, we haven't done in this game so far, and that is to um, um, pray. So this is right here. We're going to roll two dice. For each three plus, we gain one grace. Remember, the Ranger took some hits. The Ranger is at one grace right now. we got to get him back up. I don't want him getting killed. And then refresh all powers. Well, none of his powers were un unrefreshed, so we're just going to do what it says and roll the two dice and see if we can get some grace uh, back. So let's hope... We do. We got a 1 4, so we're going to get one grace back. The target number is 3. So that means we are up to two grace now with the, the uh, Ranger. All of his cards are refreshed. Uh, it wasn't so great, but that's his entire turn. He's just there soaking up, uh, getting help from the, the monks in the monastery and just soaking up the radiant light of the God that shines down on that uh, area that gives him more grace. Okay, well, uh, that was quick. So I think next up we'll go with. Um, hmm the Acolyte. Now the Acolyte is going to, he's up in the mountains, he's going to draw his event card, we're going to see what that does for him. There are looters up there, we cannot fight them, we have, we can't elude them. If we gain, we win, we gain the secrecy. Oh, if we lose, we exhaust all powers. 
Panic, fear, greed. They grab everything that's not nailed down. And there's the image for the looters. Okay, so we have to loot them. Well, he's he's not that great at eluding. He's got a, he's good, he's good at fighting. He's not good at eluding, unfortunately. So I guess we're just going to have if you get rid of all his powers, that's going to just absolutely suck. Okay, well uh, we're going. I think we only have one dice we can roll. Uh, you may choose not to lose the da -da -da -da, fight with two dice. Yeah, unfortunately, we're just going to have to get lucky. I don't, don't think he's going to. Um, pretty hard. So we need to roll a, a four. We rolled a one. So we did. We failed at that. That means all of his powers are exhausted. Wow, that is rough. So his action there is not going to be what I would hoped it would be. Now we can take a chance and just go after that Oblivion. But if we lose, we're going to lose a turn. Turns are precious in this game. And without our powers, now if we stay there, we would exhaust a power we don't have any to exhaust, but we also don't have any uh, capability. Let's see, well, I could rest. You can't hide. It's called hide, I believe. Let's look at that. I think you can hide. Hide, refresh powers, gain one secrecy up to five. Um, total waste of a turn, but I think that's what we're going to have to do. Man, yeah, I think so. So he's going to, man, the looters took all his stuff. He has to really beat him up and left him high and dry. He's going to have to replenish in the mountains. So he is literally just going to hide there. His secrecy is already above five with a six. So all it's going to do is refresh all his powers. Then at the end, he has to encounter the oblivion and and lose, uh, exhaust one of his powers. I think we'll exhaust this binding black again. We just don't need it right now. It's okay. But man, what a wasted turn. We're wasting a lot of turns with stuff we just can't get anything done with. Okay, now we're going to go last but not least to the village with the uh, druid. The druid is there. Um, now the druid does have this thing. He could use this to to uh, unexhaust everybody's powers, but we'll just hold off on that. Uh, not necessarily to use it now. Now he's going to lose the secrecy and go down to four because he's in the location with the necromancer, and then uh, he will draw his event card. Okay, blink. Oh, we're oh this is. This is fun. We're just going to roll a die and see what happens. I'm just going to roll here on the table. A six. Move to the village. We're already in the village. That didn't change anything for us. Kind of sucks. That's kind of hoping we move. But we didn't. So he blinked. Poof. And then popped back into the village where he was already standing. Now what do we want to do there? We, If we get out of that area, we can ignore blights. The power of blights. Maybe what we do... I want to get to an area where we can get some mysteries. It would be really, really helpful to do that. So I think... Now remember, because he's still in bright form. He's been in that form the whole time because he hasn't lost any any uh, grace. He's been fine, which means his ability in sprite form is to ignore blight effects unless the necromancer is present. So if I stay there, I have to deal with these wraiths and the corruption, so I don't want to stay there. The castle's got the best chance of gaining loot, but not the best get class chance of getting clues and mysteries, is what we, was, which is what we need. So he's going to move down there. Now, there's a flux cage there. It says he would lose a secrecy on entering and leaving. And there's also these revenants that he would have to deal with at the end of his turn. But, again, we don't have to do that because of his sprite form ability. We get to ignore the effects of blights. The necromancer is in the village. However, that's it for his turn. That's his whole turn. He just moved to the ruins. All right, now, uh, unfortunately, everybody's gone already. We have no quests on the board, so we don't have to worry about quests. We are going to move the darkness track up to six. Then we're going to roll a die to see what the necromancer finds. Now, he can't find the ranger. The ranger is in, in, is in the monastery, and he also has a six secrecy. The only one he can really find is the... Um, oh, I forgot to put it up. The the rain, When the druid moved to um, the ruins, he gained a secrecy. So he's at five. So really, it's good. It's the, he has to roll six to see anybody. I rolls a two. He's chasing the druid, y'all. Look. Two is here, so I don't. Th this is getting like useless for the druid. It's just terrible. Um, I mean, he's probably gonna have to stay there and just search and deal with the wraiths or the the uh, rev revenants that are there next turn. See if he can survive that because we're not getting the things we need here, there to solve. So uh, he moved there. Of course, he's gonna drop in the, in a third uh, what, a third blight there. We got a fourth blight. We gotta take care of this uh, in the uh, ruins. He's gonna look at what a <laughs> three clues. An evil presence enters. The ruins. Uh, evil presence is means he eludes with one less dice, so that is bad. And again, I, God, he just can't believe he rolled a two. <sighs> wow, this is rough, y'all. Rough. Okay, well, we're gonna go to the next turn and keep going.
I'll just flip all their, their to turn tokens over. Um, and uh, that's not so terrible. I mean, this is not good. This is not working out the way you want it. Um, let's see, the rogue... We'll go with the rogue again. He is still in the forest. He's not gaining or losing anything, and he's got nothing there. Just trying to search and get some stuff. So a dust storm comes up. He's going to gain two secrecy. It doesn't say anything about minimums or maximums. So he's back up to seven, but he's going to spend a grace or lose a turn. He will spend a grace. He's at two. That's not great. It says, the wind howls in your ears. The dirt scratches your eyes. You circle lost in the half-light. So a dust storm came up in the force. Don't ask me. That's the way it goes. His secrecy is super high at a seven, but his um, grace is uh, down to a two. And from there, he's going to search. He's got no ability. Maybe I don't do this. Maybe I don't search. I think what I'll do is... Mm, I'm going to think about this, because we just have to destroy these blights, too. You know, we really need it. We need clues so badly. I'm going to take a risk and see if we can search there again. A five! Perfect. Okay, so we did succeed in our search there. Just He only has one die. He's just got to get lucky. That's all there is to it. Uh, in the forest... No, it's not. We're getting stuff, just stuff. So what is that? That is vanishing dust. It means we can discard to, uh, after failing to elude to, turn to re-roll, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying. We can elude stuff. Dust of vanishing. There's that. So he's uh, building up some great items, but not getting any clues. And that is the end of his turn. I don't know. This is just a pathetic version of the game. We are not getting lucky. This is the way the game goes. I swear. I've been on the cusp of thinking I'm going to lose, and then suddenly I pull it out. But man, sometimes it just gets so frustrating when you can't get what you need. Okay, we're going to go then to the Acolyte. He's probably the one in the next most interesting spot up there in the mountains. We're going to draw. He's, he's dealing with a horde. Now, his secrecy is a six, so it's going to be a small horde. Um, the recent blood sh bloodshed has swollen the ranks of the dead with lesser spawn. So uh, he can... Fight or elude. Elude with a three. Let's see. He's not really good at eluding. He is decent at fighting. He's got his final rest tactic, which says fight with two dice or three. If anyone comes up ones, he loses the grace. He's going to do that. So we're going to get... I think we'll just do... Uh, it's only a... What is it? It's a four to fight them. And we'll do all three dice just to make it safe. Now, hopefully we don't roll any ones. We did not, and we rolled a five and a four. So we defeated that encounter. And then he is up there in the mountains. Now, I don't have... I think if we get rid of the Oblivion, maybe we can search better next turn, because the Oblivion is going to keep exhausting his powers. We can't have that. So I think he's going to attack the... the um, yeah, he's going to attack the Oblivion Blight that's there. That'll put him down to a 5 on Secrecy. He will use 3 dice again. Actually, it says, you may choose not to... I forgot about his Death Mask. You may choose not to lose Secrecy for attacking a Blight. Okay. So we're not going to lose that secrecy. He's going to stay at a six, and we're going to use um, three, three dice. A four, five, and a two. That will destroy the blight that's there. And he didn't lose any secrecy, and that blight, that oblivion is gone, so he won't lose the power at the end of the turn. And maybe he can search a little better, though he's got no ability to search. We're going to have to get those, those uh, I think we're going to take a, a hit on our um, grace to, to get sparks again. But that is going to be... The end of his turn, he's got nothing to encounter there, so he's done. Okay, the ranger. Ranger, ranger. Rangers and stranger, ranger, danger. Okay, I think the ranger is, he's up to two again. That's not great. I almost want to keep him there one more turn. But can we afford to is the question. Can we afford to? So I do have this pathfinding. I can exhaust to move yourself or any number of heroes at your location. One adjacent location. That would not use it. That's his action, though. Darn. That's no, That's The only value of that is that you get to take people with you. I got the Poison Arrow, Race the Hair, and Feral Spirit. Okay, well... I mean, he's got a six secrecy. He can probably get away with some things. The Corruption does what? It does uh, no bonuses. No bonuses. So his, his actual, his feral, feral Spirit won't work there. Not a good place for him to go. Uh, what I can do is move him up to the mountains and start heading him toward... And then he and the... Uh, but see, we need we need mysteries. We really do. And we need to take care of the blights in the village, too. I just wish he could move and not have to deal with those. Because his, his bonus is not going to be effective. 
It says when instructed to gain secrecy, you may instead gain two secrecy or one spark. Uh, well, he's gaining secrecy to move into the village, and it says no bonuses in the village. Now, he's actually moving from the monastery, so maybe I do get that this turn, but I wouldn't if I moved out of there next turn. I think that's probably true. So I think what we're going to do with him is he doesn't have to draw an event card because he's in the monastery. He's only got two grace. See, the problem is these guys. These guys are bad news. I think we're not going to... We can't go there yet. Well, he can't go there, rather. I think that what the ranger's going to do is he will move up to the mountains with the um, acolyte. That will give him uh, two secrecy or gain a spark. He's already a six. I think he's going to gain a spark instead of the secrecy. He just doesn't need to go up to seven right now. Nobody can find him. He's fine. And there's no blights. Okay, that is going to mark the end of the ranger. We have the druid who's down there with the uh, um, necromancer again. So we're going to lose a secrecy. He's now down to four. He can't keep up with this. Um, and we're going to draw his event card. What does it say? Latent spell. Lose a one secrecy. Then spend one grace or discard this event without further effect. Roll one die and take the highest. Destroy a blight of your choice from anywhere. Draw a power card. Move to another location. No effect. Oh, man, that's interesting. Um, okay, we're going to lose the secrecy. So he's down to three. We are going to lose the grace as well. Okay, well, I, I, I'm spending the grace. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and get this uh, something happening here with this. Let's see, a five. What's a five? A five is draw a power card. So let's draw a power card for the, the druid. It's not the best thing I would have liked to have moved, actually, which was a lesser ability on a four I would have moved, or six destroy a blight. That would have been really nice. Uh, okay, we got hibernate. It's a bonus. We're going to gain a spark at the end of each turn where we did not attack, search, or pray. So that means basically when we... What are the actions we could do there that would be interesting? Hide, I believe. Um, yeah, attack, search, or pray. So retrieve a holy relic, meditate, or hide. Or travel. At the end of the turn, we just not attack, search, or pray. So travel. So travel and hide. We're going to gain sparks. That's interesting. So that that being said, I don't I don't think we can stay there. I'm looking at this board. I like I'd love to stay there and search, but here's the problem. There are already four blights there. His secrecy is already down to a three. If he attacks a blight, it will go down to a two, um, and the necromancer will just stay there, right? So there's no value in staying there. Now the flux cage is going to affect him. So when he leaves, he's going to lose a, a secrecy, but he's going to gain one for moving. And a spark, so that's not so terrible. Um, so I think what we're going to do with him is we will move to there. That will His secrecy is going to be neutral. He will, he will gain a spark from his hibernation bonus. Okay. And it does say gain a spark at the end of each turn when you, where you did not attack, search, or pray. Okay, so this is at the end of the turn. So he moves there. That was his action. He, because he's still in his sprite form and the necromancer is no longer with him, he doesn't have to deal with this or the confusion that's there. And the confusion is, if we attack it, it says no tactics. But uh, this is the sprite, the sprite form is not a tactic. It, is an, it was an action to activate. Now that it's active, he is a sprite floating around trying to elude the necromancer who just follows him all over the place. Uh, but that is, that's it. That's everybody's turn. So um, we're going to go on to the Necromancer. Oops, did I bump that? I thought, were we at seven? I thought we were at six. I think we're at six. Yeah, we were at six. We're going to go to seven now. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'll double check that. I think I bumped the marker. I think we were at six. Okay. Um, we don't have anything on the board, so I just, I just moved the darkness track. There's nothing else to keep track of. And then we're going to roll to see where he moves... He's probably chasing the druid. A three. He is not going to chase the druid. He's going to go in the direction of three, which is actually the village. Not the worst thing that could happen for us. Except we're going to have three blights now in the village. So we're starting to get a little, little crazy there. A flux cage is going into the village. Well, we know what that does because we have one also in the ruins. He's trying to catch us, trying to lure our secrecy and catch us. So there is another flux cage. Here, here's the art for that here in the village. So the village needs to be taken care of. we got to get in there, too. But uh, that's that. So the Necromancer did his thing. We're going to go back to our player's turns. Not wonderful, that's for sure. Um, I think what we're going we're to do something different with the uh, rogue. So we're going to go with the rogue right now. He is going to get his um, thing is going to be this. A tracker. Four or allude to five. Win a fight. We lose a secrecy. Win an elude, no effect, but if we fail, we lose two secrecy. 
A rustle of leaves, a creeping silence, a hungry malevolence, malevolence dogs your step. Well, I think we'll, we'll fight it. I guess, well, why would I do that? If I win the fight, I'm going to lose a secrecy anyway. I can ambush, spend one secrecy to fight with three dice, or I can I have the tactic of elude with two dice and gain one secrecy if I double succeed. We'll do that. We're going to try and elude him. We're probably going to end up losing two secrecy, but hey, it's worth trying. Let's see. We do have our, our vanishing dust. We can take at, we can deal, take use that if we need to. But hopefully, oh, we rolled a six. So we succeeded. That's awesome. So we, um, we won the elude check, so nothing happens. We just avoid him. Now he gets to take an action. Um, he is now going to move to here, and that is going to be his action. He would normally gain a secrecy, but he's already at seven. So uh, he's not going to gain a secrecy, but when he enters there because of the flux cage, he will lose one. So he's at six right now, which is fine. So he's sneaking in there after the necromancer to try and kill some of these blights that are there, and he'll sneak back out. we got two he can take care of pretty quickly, uh, but at the end of his turn, he's going to have to deal with them. So he can't, he's got minus one dice to elude there. Now remember, this, his, his event was here, not there. So he's going to have to deal with these two guys here. Um, I don't want to lose a bunch of secrecy, so I think we're going to elude. But we're only going to be eluding with one dice. I still have my vanishing dust. And what, what is, I can't remember what the powder did, the uh, cursed ashes. It says, uh, discard during your turn to ignore the effects of the blights for the rest of the turn. We're going to do that. He's going to di discard his uh, cursed ashes to just ignore all the blights, which means he also does not lose that secrecy from the flux cage. He could have done that before he moved, and I would have, because that would make the most sense. Okay, so we're there. We don't have to worry about any of those guys. We just spent our, we, we, through our cursed ashes, and they they made the uh, the blights in the region ineffective, basically. But that is his turn, so he is there in the ruins where he's going to try and do some searching and then try and destroy some blights. Okay, next up, um, I think we'll go with the druid. The druid is going to draw his event card because maybe we can get some things done. That would be awfully nice. It's midnight. The dead do not rest. It's just plus one to our darkness track. Okay, well, we are there with uh, confusion and zombies. I, we can take care of the zombies. I have a spark. Searching there is not that helpful for us, though. It's items. So maybe I just want to keep moving. I don't know. I, if I move into the village, he's going to stay in the village. And the village has a flux cage now, too. Um, what else can we do? Hmm. Um... We could take out those blights, but I'm, I'm mainly worried about the ruins right now, but that's okay. We've got somebody in the ruins that's going to take care of that that the Necromancer cannot find. So uh, we're in good shape there. So what do I do with our action? Do I search there? Maybe get lucky? I don't think I'm going to get lucky. It says mainly in the swamp it's going to be items. It's a search difficulty of four. i got a spark I could spend on it. Um, I won't get a spark from my hibernation this turn, though. That's okay. And I'm, in my sprite form, I just ignore those guys. So I don't have anything to lose there, but I also don't have anything to gain. I, I need clues. Well, we'll do it. We're going to do it. We're just going to spend a spark. We're going to search the swamp and see if we can get something going here. Four and a three, so we succeeded. But I don't think we're going to get what we want unless we get really lucky. We did not. We got um, a uh, we got an epiphany. Search your power deck and take the card of your choice and then shuffle it. Now that might be helpful. Let's see. We've got Visions, Exhaust after you draw an event card to discard it without effect. That's always a good one. Mist Form, when you would suffer grace, you may instead deactivate and exhaust all active forms. That's pretty good. Fight or Flight, plus one die on fight rolls where your secrecy is greater or equal to than your grace. That'd be right now, for example. Uh, plus one die on elude rolls when your secrecy is less than your grace. Hmm. Raven form, deactivate all forms, plus one die. When searching, when you travel, you may move two spaces. Oh my, but we would have to deal with, right now the sprite form allows us to not have to deal with um, uh, the blights in the area. Tranquility, uh, bonus plus three default grace. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, tree form, D uh, gain two grace up to your default start of your turn. Your actions can only be to hide or use a druid power. Vines, exhaust, to fight uh, or elude with four dice. Wow, we get uh, wolf form. Plus one die when fighting, plus one die with losing, looting, and you cannot gain grace. And celerity, deactivate all forms. Travel, optionally activate one of your forms. Hmm. 
Oh man, uh, I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about the tr the one the um, the wolf form's pretty good, but the I'm pretty excited excited about just doing the tranquility plus three to my default grace. Man, you can be really tough with that. But the visions exhaust uh, the also the raven form. The raven form is another one that's really good. Here it is, the raven form. I can deactivate all forms, op optionally activate this one. I get plus one die when searching. When you travel, you may move to two spaces, and you but you cannot gain grace. We know that. They all do that. Um, I think I'm going to do that because we need some searching and we need movement. So he's going to take the raven form, and then we're going to shuffle up his... Um, he's got five powers now. It's pretty good for him. Um, and we'll shuffle these up. Okay. Rarely see five powers in the game. That was his action. So... Uh, his search action. So he searched there, he got an epiphany, it was very powerful for him in the swamps. He gets to ignore, because he's still in his sprite form, he gets to ignore the two blights that are there. And that's going to be the end of his turn. Okay, now we got the two folks up in the mountains. So we'll start with the ranger and see what the ranger gets. Exhaust all powers or draw two more events. We're going to exhaust all his powers because that seems to be the way of things. Uh, everybody just has to exhaust powers. And since he doesn't have any special abilities there, but he does have a spark. We're going to spend it to do a search action, and hopefully we can search in that area. We've got two dice. A one is six, man. I thought I saw the one first. So we do get to, we do get that up there. Let's see what we get. Up in the mountains. Uh, oh, what is that? I don't know what that one is. That is a Stardust. Reduce the uh, darkness track by one. Okay, I'll do that, but that's not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Um, okay. And uh, that is going to be, there's no blights there, so that's his turn. And then we're going to go to the Acolyte. The Acolyte's going to draw an event card. We find an altar. Roll a die, take the highest. Because see, the reason it says that is because you can use sparks to modify this. But we're not going to. We're just going to roll a die. Roll the five. Um, four through six, pure altar. You may spend one secrecy to gain one grace. Does that help the Acolyte? Um... It says uh, remnants of forgotten of a forgotten time, delicate uh, carvings worn down by ages of neglect. Okay, so we found this altar. We could spend a secrecy that would put her, put him down to five to gain a grace. I think we'll do that. That'll put him up to five. I guess it allows him to go over. Doesn't say he can't go over his minute. His his. I don't think he can. So I don't. I don't think we're going to do that. I think he's going to stay there with his six secrecy and not do that. Okay, uh, and then we're going to search. He does not have any sparks. Or do I want to do this? I think we're going to do this. We're going to exhaust this. Boom. We're going to go down to three uh, grace for him. And then we're going... That's going to give us three sparks. I love that ability because we're just going to use two of them right... Uh, I'll use one of them right now. Let me think. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to spend the spark. One spark. Get two dice. Okay, we rolled a six and a one. Man, I'm just polarized completely. I keep looking at the one first and thinking I failed. Uh, let me see. We were in the mountains. <sighs> okay. Um, that is not a mystery. I think that is... Oh, it's an artifact. Well, this isn't terrible. I mean, artifacts are awesome. This will be the first artifact we see in the game, but I really don't want them. I want secrets so I can get clues, so I can get the thing to kill the necromancer. We're going to lose at this pace, for sure. I can't get anything worth keeping. And we're going to try and clear out the ruins so we can search there. Those are the two best places. The, the mountains, the forest, and the ruins are the best places for searching for these things. But we're just not getting lucky. Okay, I've been shuffling up the artifact deck. Let's see. I mean, there's a lot of artifacts. You usually only see one or two in a whole game. So we'll see what this is. The ghost mail. At the start of your turn, you may spend one grace to gain a secrecy up to default. Or spend one secrecy to gain a grace up to default. As light as child's laughter and as cold as the north wind you don't feel the blows that strike it wow that is super powerful I love that so we're gonna put that with um, the acolyte he is now has the ghost armor which is pretty cool pretty powerful I think we'll be using that um, but he didn't find what he wanted and that's gonna be the end of his turn there's no blight so we don't have to deal with anything and if that's the end of all the characters turns again so no clues or, or um, no mysteries or quests on the board. So we're going to go up to eight. 
on the darkness track, and then we're going to roll for the necromancer. He's probably going to chase the druid. We'll see. He rolled a six. He sees. He sees. <laughs> Let's see who does he see. He sees the druid first, uh, obviously. Does not see the ranger. Does not see the acolyte. Actually, he's going to chase the druid into the swamp, which is kind of what I thought would happen. Um, and then he will drop another blight in the swamp there. Uh, it's a nexus. A nexus is a bad one. We may have to leave him there to deal with it. The druid might have to stay there and try and solve this. Looking for the nexus. There it is. Protects all the blights. So now all the blights in this region are protected. Uh, protects far blights. So I think I have to destroy the nexus before I can destroy any other blight. Isn't that wonderful? Because I sent the rogue specifically to destroy the blights in that area, and then the, the necromancer is one step ahead of us and drops the nexus. And I'm pretty sure that's what this does. Heroes cannot destroy blights that are outside of the nexus's location. So we have to, the druid is going to have to bite the bullet and make a sacrifice and stay there and try and kill this, just kill something. That's just the way it is. Uh, yuck. Okay, well. That was the Necromancer's turn. We'll do one more turn in this episode of the Heroes. We'll see if we can get anything going on here at all that would result or even resemble winning the game. All right. Uh, not doing so well on that so far. That is for sure. Okay. Let's see. I think, well, the Rogue's whole turn just went upside down. So I think I'm going to pause on the Rogue and see. He, I think he's just going to have to stay there and search. Man, he could lose two grace this round. I don't think he will, but we also are minus one to elude because of the evil presence. Let's draw his... Okay, we're going to go with him first. We're going to draw his card. His, uh, call to action. Gain a spark. Draw a quest and roll one to determine its location and add a time marker. Ugh. A crystallized moment. Your path stretches before you, bright as a dream and as sharp as loss. Okay, so we're going to gain a spark for the rogue. That's good. And then we're going to get a random quest out on the board and, and put a time mark on it so we're going to have less time to solve this quest. Let's see what we get. I'm just going to do another cut. There we go. Uh, tricksters. Four times, so three times. We need two successes. Uh, action, we need to elude versus a two. Very easy. Each success is a one. If we complete it, every hero gains a spark. If we expire, all heroes lose a secrecy. Some imps have stumbled upon resistance operations and are causing mischief and disruption. Lead them away before they attract the attention of the Necromancer's minions. Okay, let's see where that goes. We're going to roll a die. See where this quest goes. It's going in one. So actually, that's interesting. It's up in the mountains with our two characters. And we're going to put a time token on it already. So we only got three turns left to solve the Trickster's quest. Luckily, it's quite easy. Um, and uh, yeah, except our Ranger has no powers right now. So And the... Acolyte's not good at eluding. <laughs> fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay, uh, that's that was his act, his event. So no big deal there. Now we're in the ruins. Now do we search? I could spend the spark to search, and then just have to suck up some hits. He's he's only got two grace left. This could be bad. Could be bad. But we're gonna do it. Okay, we're gonna suck up that. We're gonna use the spark. We're going to search. Yes, you can search in the region for sure. There are blights there. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to roll two search dice. Come on, come on, come on. A six and a two, we succeeded again. Now, if I roll two sixes, it doesn't mean I get to draw two searches. Just one, we just succeed. And we are in the ruins. Finally, oh my gosh, finally a mystery comes onto the board after all that work. This is what we needed. Unfortunately, it's going, it might be in the ruins. We'll see. <laughs> so, we'll see. Okay, I'm shuffling up the mystery deck. Our first, you can see it's pretty thick, too. There's a lot of replay in this game. Lots of replay. Okay, let's draw it and see what we get. Here's our mystery. So the first thing is we get one automatically just because we found this. This is by Starlight. Uh, the nighttime ritual promises to weaken the Necromancer if you can pay its price. As an action, each hero places one of their power cards on the bottom of its deck. Remove a darkness card from play and plus two clues. That's very powerful. It goes into a random location, so we're going to roll to see where that lands. Let's see where it is. It is in one. It's up in the mountains. Wow, crazy. Everything's happening in the mountains right now. See, it's one right there, so that's why it went up there. Okay, uh, rogue, not bad, but now we have a problem. We need to either fight off the revenants and the specters, 
The revenants are nasty. Um, the revenants are very nasty. So I think we're going to spend a secrecy. We're going to go down to six to fight. Um, no, the fight. Well, neither ones are this. Neither one of them are that bad. So yeah, we'll um, fight the specters because we can do that, and it'll help us out. Because if we fight them with a, we spend a secrecy with our ambush, we can use three dice in our fight. So very likely to win this battle. Okay, against uh, defending ourselves against the revenants, we need just need to roll five. We did not, so we lose a grace. This is what I was worried about. Okay, now with the specters. I don't want to go, uh, well, I think our best chance is to do it again, so we're going to go down to a five secrecy, and now we need to roll a four. We did. Okay, so we only lost one grace there, but that was not good. We're going to, we're going to have to hustle, and I still haven't destroyed any blights out there, but that's okay. All right, and that was the rogue's turn. That was the first action of the game. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay. What are we going to do here now? Um... I am going to go with the Druid, and I'll tell you why. So let's draw the Druid's event card. Let's see what we get there. Metamorphosis. Randomly select one of your powers, then spend one, one grace, or place the selected power at the bottom of its deck and draw a card from the same deck. You suddenly feel as if the fates have, sp have spilt ink over the story of your life. What has changed? We'll do that. We will just place, we'll place the selected power. I think we're going to place hibernation on the bottom of our deck. We already shuffled it. And we're going to draw another one. What do we get? Visions. Exhaust after you draw an event card to discard it without effect. So there we go. That's not bad. I'll take it. Uh, but I want to keep that Raven's form for searching, I think. Okay, now our action. Well, we can't hang out. But if I don't destroy the Nexus, I, I, mean, I don't think we have a choice. We're going to have to destroy the Nexus. Um... Yeah, I think for our action, we're going to attack the Nexus. The Nexus is a three. Um, oh, and I also want to do this. I'm doing this. I'm spending this to uh, give everybody their, their powers back. That's the harp, the, li the lyre, the lyre, lyre, however you pronounce it. It says, uh, soothing lyre, it says Dis discard at any time to refresh all powers of all heroes. So that means our ranger's back in action. The two powers that were exhausted from our Acolyte, uh, Spite and Binding Black are in action, and Smuggler's Network is activated again. So that was effective, and then he's going to use his tactic of uh, his animal companion to fight the, the uh, Blight there and try and destroy the Nexus. So he's going to go down to a two secrecy. Necromancer's not leaving there, but he wants to destroy the Nexus, otherwise he can't destroy the other Blights. Okay, come on, a five and a six, very, very good. We did succeed in doing that. Kapow. Okay. And there we go. The Nexus is destroyed. And that was very, very uh, useful, by the way. Okay. We have destroyed the Nexus. Nexus. Now, um, he is, unfortunately, because the Necromancer is there, he doesn't get to use any bonuses. So his visions doesn't work there. But everything else is a tactic or an action. And he will have to suffer uh, trying to evade the zombies. I think he's going to elude. It's only a three. Uh, he has his camouflage, which is elude with two dice. We're going to try that. Uh, he rolled a five, so he succeeded at that. He eluded the, the guys there, but the necromancer is probably going to stay in that space and drop another blight. It's okay as long as it's not another nexus. Um, next up, okay, we're going to go with the, I think, the uh, ranger. Let's do the ranger's event. Watchers. Uh, Compared to the Darkness Track, it's at an 8, so it's going to be 0 to 9. There are lookouts. It says a uh, hushed word, a sudden stillness, eyes in the dark. So we're going to have to elude them or lose a secrecy. That's okay. Um, we have a tactic, elude with two dice. If we roll 6, we must move. That's not the worst thing in the world. So we're going to use that. That's called race the hare. We rolled two fives, so we did elude the watchers and did not have to move. Good job there. Okay, now what am I going to do when I'm there? Am I going to go after... I think I'm going to go after the tricksters. Yeah, it's only a two, and we can we can probably get both of them again using our our um, race the hair ability, right? 
I don't want to use the action of the... Uh, he doesn't have... You know who does have a couple extra powers to, to burn is the Acolyte. Uh, but I don't want to use the action of the... Um, by Starlight. It says every hero places... Oh, every hero places one of their cards in the bottom of the deck. Remove a Darkness card. Because we don't have any Darkness cards out right now. So it would just be for clues. So I think what we're going to do there is we're going to elude to try and complete the Trickster's Quest. So we've got two dice. Um, and hopefully don't roll a six because then we'll have to move it. Uh, we rolled two ones, so we failed at both. We had to roll twos, guys. We had to roll twos. That's all. So we failed at that. And that is his entire turn. Wasteful. Okay, now we got the Acolyte. The Acolyte is there. We're going to draw his event card. And it's a setback. Count the blights in your location. Zero. Zero to one. Spend a spark or lose. Okay, he can do that. He spends a spark and does not lose a grace. What is the flavor text on this one? You failed again. It always goes wrong. And every day, the sky is a little darker. Why even try? Well, that's a bummer. You know what's... Yeah, that's that's okay. That's not the word. That was a pretty easy one to have to deal with. And then I think... I guess he's going to have to go for the tricksters. we got to get that done. Might as well get that done. It gives us uh, everybody a spark. Does he even bother? To, he, well, we need two successes. So he's going to have to spend the spark to gain the spark. <sighs> I don't know. I can trade secrecy for grace and grace for secrecy with my armor, my ghost mail. I'll spend the spark on it. We'll just see. We'll get a spark back and we can complete that quest. So, maybe. There we go. Two twos. I'm going, I, I doubled what I rolled last time. So, but that means that both, there were two successes. Therefore, we get two success actions. Loot versus a two. Each success is a boom. Um, so we're going to get, every hero is going to gain a spark, and then this quest is going away. Not the best quest in the world, but it is what it is. So uh, everybody will gain a spark. Just putting them out on their boards. And there we go. Okay, and that is, that's his turn. That's his turn. Okay. Um, I could do the binding, the, the spite here, and just get more sparks from a grace, but I think we'll leave it alone for right now. I may use this one. Exhaust after Necromancer movement to prevent all... Prevent him from detecting any heroes regardless of secrecy. It means he just randomly roll and go somewhere. Uh, but I don't want him going back to the ruins, so I don't think that's a good idea. Anyway, uh, everybody's gone again. And I still... I mean, at least I got one clue on the board, I guess. That's helpful. All right. Um, darkness track goes up one. There are no more quests. We took care of it. We're at a nine on the darkness track. We're going to roll for the Necromancer. He absolutely detects everybody, but he's already there with the druid, so he's going to stay there and drop another blight down. What is it in the... It's going to be in the swamps. A taint. He's dropping a taint into the... into the... Uh, that area. He says, cannot gain uh, grace while you're there. He can't gain it grace anyway because he's in the sprite form. And if and we can lose one grace if we ta attack this and don't succeed. So, and that's what it looks like. There's this green purple haze over, or greenish haze over everything in the swamp, which kind of looks like it would be that way anyway. And with that, we're going to wrap up this episode. We are not doing well on getting to win the game. Now, there's some a milestone event that's about to happen. And that means that we are going to be drawing a darkness card. Just to give you an example of, a, of one of them. For the Necromancer. Like here's Faded Adversary. Immediately activate one random hero. Active. Other heroes receive no benefit from Holy Relics. The heroes cannot win by killing the Necromancer unless you are the one to kill him. So basically this ends up going to one of the heroes. And that hero is their, the fated adversary of the Necromancer, for example, making it harder for us to win. And that's what all these do. Here's another example of one. Uh, cursed Ground, whenever a hero destroys a Blight, the hero loses one grace. That's terrible. So you can see how bad those are. Well, you also saw that with the By Starlight, we have the ability to get rid of a Darkness card. He only gets two in the game. He gets one here, one here. You saw a big stack. There's quite a variety in there. But he's about to get one at the end of the next turn. So we'll leave that cliffhanger happening. we got lots of things going on. We, I, this is another one of those ones where I don't know that I'm going to win, y'all. It just doesn't feel good right now. It feels like a loss coming. Uh, but uh, we're going to keep fighting it out. And the characters are doing, they're not doing that badly. We just can't get what we need to garner the clues we need to get a relic. And so I thought that this would be the, the group that would be able to pull three relics and go back to the monastery and win because someone had asked if I could do that. But I do not see that happening. Now we could get 30 clues. We only got one in, I don't know, what is it, 10 turns so far? 
yeah, 10, 11 turns. Yeah, so there you go. All right, y'all. Uh, thanks so much. I'll talk to you in the next episode, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.